testing of the nail, uh, we've just heard some do it, some don't. Uh, I think, you know, why do we do it? We want to rule out the production error, which I think is, is very rare. The other thing is we, you know, we possibly could have damaged the mechanism during insertion. So I don't know what's your experience. So for me, I never had a nail that didn't work. You? Okay. Okay. So yeah, maybe it's, it's yeah, important. So you've seen a little bit about the nail, uh, about the radiographic anatomy. We have the magnets. Then there comes the gearbox. These are the three gears that go from like eight to 32 to 200 and something. Uh, this is also the reason why it takes so long to, to distract for, for one millimeter. Uh, then you have the thrust bearing. There is a retaining ring. There is a coupler, which looks, which I think is really an important structure. It looks like a head, like a chapeau. And then there is the distraction distance. You have the lead screw, which you can see. And in, from the P2 on, there is the anti-jam split washer. This is also a very nice thing because you can see the position of the anti-jam split washer and it makes it much easier to see when you test the nail. Now, when you've done with surgery, you want to, to mark the magnet. And uh, so what we usually do, we just make a big line marking the middle of the magnet. You need to be a little bit careful if you do this for the tibia because in the tibia and for the small tibial nails, there is a dummy inside where the magnet is, and then there is a very small magnet. So you must be sure that you don't uh, mix these two up. It's not, it's not always so easy to see what is really the magnet. And in the small, in the, like in the 8.5 atibial nail, the smaller part is the magnet, not the bigger part. So that's a little bit tricky, I find. Uh, so, of course, we really want to, to extend this, this mark on the outside uh, for, for the, the reason we already Heard that we can see where uh, the drum from from the ERC is, but there is a second reason. The second reason is you've learned that there is a minimum, uh, like a maximum distance from the magnet to the actuator, and sometimes, especially in guys, they sometimes have a very bulky, big uh, muscles in the front, but on the side, really not so much. There is just a fascia, so there is. Uh, a smaller distance from the side to the bone than from the top to the bone. So in those patients, if you're not sure if you can really get to the nail, you can come from the side. So this is another reason why I think it's good to extend this. Now, uh, prior to distraction, uh, you want to position the fluoro like in a reproducible way that you can get the same, the same picture afterwards. And this makes it easier to see the small changes. So what I usually do is I make sure that the uh, fluoroscopy is very high so that I can, uh, that I don't ha have to change the position of the fluoroscopy before and after testing the nail, or you just extend the C arm and so that you get in the same position afterwards. Then we take a high intensity shot to really see uh, the anatomy of the nail. Uh, we dress the magnet with a fluoroscope trail, uh, which is, which works quite nicely. And you need to be very careful. The magnet is really very, very strong. So despite the fact that we know that, and despite the fact that we keep telling our nurses, they still manage to, to hold it too close to the instruments, like every 15th case. And then you have to put all the, like, the clamps and everything from the magnet. And usually it's not sterile anymore, because usually then the drape is kind of injured on some places. So you have to drape it again. So it's, it, it makes sense to tell them over and over again. So it's recommended to, to test the nail for at least one millimeter. And we've heard, so one millimeter takes seven minutes. <laughs> Nevertheless, it feels like 70 minutes. So this is one part of the surgery. That's the only part of the surgery I really don't uh, enjoy. In the P1, it was more difficult to see because like in the P1, there wasn't the anti jam split washer. So sometimes you, know, you really needed to go to full millimeter or even two millimeters to see it well. Uh, but, you know, it was still quite easy to see, like from here to here. Uh, in the P2 nail, uh, due to the anti jam split washer, I find it much easier. So this is the before and this is the after. And so I usually only test one millimeter. Now I only do like 0 0.8 because I can't wait that it's over. And it, you usually still see it with 0 0.8 again before and after. So you really, due to this small washer 
we can really see it very nicely. Now, if, what if the marks wear off? You know, sometimes we have like very um, strict nurses, they clean the patient very well and suddenly all the marks are gone. Uh, you know, most likely the best thing is to go back to fluoro. The other thing is you could use a compass. So if you move a compass down the nail, it changes the direction once you pass over the magnet. So that's a nice technique. And if you maybe still have the monitor from, from the ISKD, you could, you could use that. So the old ISKD monitor was able to find the position of the magnet. So, but most likely the easiest way is to go back to fluoro. So that's really important, send down the, mark, the magnet. Uh, make sure when you mark the magnet, there is like one thing you need to consider if you have a very big patient and he's going to do this himself. It's, it might be different if, if he's sitting or lying down. So when you're lying down and you sit up, the skin moves a little bit. So really mark it like in the middle so that he can find it again. And I really p hope that we get a bigger magnet to make this a little bit quicker. So, because that's not fun. Thank you.